Welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. I have a bunch of pots piled up here that I brought from my old house and never put flowers in this year. So what I'm going to do is sketch those and I think I'm going to paint them and I'm going to keep it a close up like this with the tree in the background. But I want to get the pots primarily. So let's get started. So today I'm going to be painting in gouache, I believe, but first I want to sketch what I plan to do. I'm going to sketch all those little pots and grab my pencil here and an eraser and then I'll go ahead and sketch this up and we can go ahead with the painting. I think I'll just, um, I know some of you like to see the whole process. I'd love to show you the whole process except that I think that it might take me a while, so let me just, I got to uh, clip this page down because it's a little bit windy today. Actually, I'll be taping it anyway, so I should go ahead and tape it first. Did I bring my tape? Yes, I did. If I tape it down, then I won't have to worry about clipping it. Now, while I'm sketching, I'm going to have these pre-wet so that they have time to reactivate and then I don't have to worry about my paint not activating quickly enough. I don't have much white here though. Luckily I'm at home painting so hopefully I can find my white. I can't find my gouache anywhere so if I run out in this case, this case here, then I'm going to have a problem. I looked for it and I can't find it. I think it's in my barn in my drawers in one of my cabinets and I can't get to that one in particular. So I'm a little concerned, but they better start building pretty darn quick, eh? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sketch this out and then we'll meet back. The gouache used in this painting is M. Graham and Windsor and & Newton. To start, I'm going ahead and putting in my background colors. I'm using gouache and my first layer usually goes in a little more thin or watered down and then I build up on that with each subsequent layer getting a little thicker um, on each layer. If you don't do that, if you have too much water on your brush on subsequent layers then you run the risk of pulling up the pigment underneath or mixing them together. 
Now there are some circumstances you might want them to mix together and that's fine. Then just add a little bit more water to your brush and they'll mix perfectly well. Now here you see I'm adding blue-gray and my brown together to get the color I want for my tree trunks. And I'll be going back over this again with subsequent layers to get the detail on my bark and also for the shading that I want on the tree where the light is hitting it. There wasn't a lot of light actually hitting it during the time that I was painting. Later in the day, when it gets the sun gets lower, then it hits it a little better. But I like that effect, so I kind of added that into my painting, which you can do. That's not a problem. The brush I'm using here is a synthetic by De La Rowney. It's their System 3 series of brushes, and it is the one half inch sword. Here I mixed a beige color to go over the tree trunk to begin adding in some bark detailing. I'm putting in the detailing on this pot with a number two cat's tongue. It's a golden taclon, just an off-brand by, I think this one's called Zem. I apologize for the angle and the failure to do a close-up on this one. I was using a different tripod and it's hard for me to get it over my work well when I'm doing plein air painting, so that's why you're seeing it at an angle. I'm trying to find something that will work better for me. I know many people use a GoPro and several other types of things, but um, I'm not going to be buying another camera for that purpose, so I just got to figure it out, so bear with me while, while I figure this out. For the clay pot color, I just mixed a little bit of red, some yellow, and a touch of brown in order to get the clay color and then I go in with the brown detail to put the shadow on the pot where it has a bit of a lip. And that other pot, I think I just used a little more red and some burnt sienna together to do that pot that was sitting on top of the clay pot. For the reflection on the pots, I just used the white of the paper rather than white gouache to get that brightness.
Once this little pot dries, I'll be going back and I'm going to add a design onto the beige area with the dark brown color. Now, when you're painting something like this, you don't have to paint on the actual design. I did that on the pot over to the right just because it was so interesting and I thought it added a lot. But for that little pot in the center with the beige lower portion, I'll just scribble something in and that will give it the same effect. I use my fingers a lot with gouache. When I'm trying to get dry brush effects, I can go in and just kind of pat it dry and take the value down quite a bit. So that's what I was doing there. Using some white paint, I'm just going over and then I gradually dab at it. I didn't want it to be bright. And actually that wasn't white paint. I believe it was that that buff color off to the left that I used and then I was going back in with some sepia or black may have been black that I used for the darker shades Now here I'm switching over to my Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin 3 Ot Rigger or Script Liner, whatever they call it in that line. Uh, that 3 Ot is triple zero. Now I'm using the Rigger to paint in little sprigs of grass here and there and then I'm just about done. Now here I guess I did decide to add a couple white lines on here and there with some white gouache, but that's about it.
If you liked the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. It really helps me. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe. I have a lot of different types of videos out there. If you guys want to see more plein air paintings, just uh, let me know down below. Leave me a comment. And remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care.